Ooh, it is sultry out here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we will start in just a minute. Hold on. And hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, just give me one quick minute. We will start. Um, give everyone a chance. I just have to run and get something. I will be right back. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry for leaving you hanging there. I had to go get a tissue. It is so sultry here today. I'm a, a little bit of a wet head because I was working and then I was just like yesterday covered with dirt and sweat and my hair was all matted down, so I took a shower. I have a feeling for the coming period of time, whenever you see me, I'm going to be either a clean wet head or a filthy sweat head, uh, <laughs> depending on the moment. Um, but thank you all. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, you all. Oh. So before we get started on Crown Chakra, <laughs> um, I want to... Uh, and. Look at this, you see all these lights over my head? I felt like um, with all the earth, the grounding right here, and all the lights, like you see, woo! <laughs> I thought this is the perfect visual for uh, the work we're gonna do today. Um, and you can see like on the shelves behind me, ceramics drying because this is also a pottery studio. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi, Milena, Leah, Margie, Lori, Catherine. Like, hi, all of you. Hi, all of you. Oh, I, am, I am so happy today. Um, partly because I was able to take the plastic sheets down on the nursery. So now we're not excluded. Like, I felt like we had nature excluded from nature. And it's necessary when the weather is uh, cold. <laughs> Um, but once the weather turns warm, you know, the sheets actually make this area colder. It becomes like a, like a damp, chill basement kind of feel. So it was so great yesterday to pull the sheets down, fold them up. Uh, there actually are leaf raking sheets. We rake leaves onto them. And so we're happy to get those back to their intended purpose. And, um, this next week, you're going to see me doing a lot of work here. <laughs> but obviously, you know, I love it. So I'm mentioning the garden also because this is a new experience for me. Traditionally, in my family, I'm the landscaper and my brother is the gardener. My brother can put anything in the ground, anywhere in any environment, and it will flourish. He just he has the green thumb times 10. And because I'm not as good as him, and you know, all we know is what we're raised with, I always grew up thinking that I had like a black thumb. My family used to tease me that, um, oh yeah, hi Kathleen, hi Kitty, hi Veada. Um, so my family always teased me that I had the black thumb because 
my brother had this like crazy green thumb. And as I got older, moved on my own, started my own little kitchen gardens, I realized I don't have a black thumb. I'm a pretty good gardener, but you can't compare me to the virtuoso of gardening. So usually when I do gardening, like my brother does most of the gardening and I do the landscaping and he teaches me stuff. This year I'm on my own. Um, he and his family, they all have jobs where they have to go out to work. And so we can't come into contact with each other. And he doesn't even want to be like too much around us because, you know, like who wants to be the one who gets their parents infected with COVID-19? So uh, I call him with questions and stuff like that. But all of this is like massive stressed out research on my own. It's like a little hit and miss. So it's like, um, like I did learn that I was overwatering some of the plants and they were suffering. Um, and everything with the plastic sheets, there was too crowded together. So now with the sheets gone, I'm able to spread things like over here. I have a lot of spackle buckets here and I'm making good use of them to raise pots up so the ceiling lights can get to them. So anyway, <laughs> I feel like I'm celebrating because my wild experiment is actually beginning to pay off a little bit. Um, I also want to mention two things before we start because I'm going to forget. And if you're here today, I think these two things will be of interest to you. Um, one, tomorrow, and ticket cost is $44.44. .44. Um, and you see the event posted all over my Facebook page. And I'll put a link here in the comments when this uh, session is over. Tomorrow, I, Uma and Rob of Lotus uh, Love and Light, and uh, Carlos and Medium are doing an all-day workshop on raising your vibration. And it is specifically for all of us who are in this situation. It's a little bit of a bummer. It can really, like, oppress us. It's about raising our frequency, not just all frequency, going internal, radiating out flowing in and through your physical frequency, emotional, psychological, energetic, spiritual, like all of it. So it's an all day symposium. Uh, it will, we're not live streaming it, it will be on Zoom. So you have to buy the ticket to get the Zoom link. And everyone who attends will then get the copy of the video of the whole day conference. Uh, so that you can watch things again and again. There'll be a lot of like amazing tips. We've been preparing for this for like, I don't know, like a month, six weeks. Like we've been planning it and prepping it. So we have like pretty good program. So I hope you can join us. Uh, hi, Vivek and yay, Debbie's going. Yeah, the last two we did, uh, we did two free symposiums and um, uh, and also, just so you guys know, everyone who attends tomorrow, I am editing all the video of the two symposiums we just had. And when we get tomorrow, we'll have the whole thing up there, but I'm also editing the video into bite-sized pieces. And we're loading it into my online school. Everyone who attends tomorrow will also end up, once I have it done in another like week or so, uh, probably two weeks. I promise one, it'll be two. Um, everyone will get a coupon code to be able to buy that program for free. Um, and anyone who does not attend, you know, will have to pay. And it'll be a little more than $44.44 .44 because I'm going to have to put a lot of man hours into editing and putting everything together. Um, so, so there's that. And then, uh, as some of you know, um, oh, yay, yay, I'm glad to see Kathleen, you're going to sign up. It's going to be such, like, anyone who's seen our last symposiums, and you can go on my Facebook page and find them because they're, they're there. We work, the four of us work together so beautifully, and we've been, like, developing our work together as a group for a long time. 
so we're like super cohesive and like it, it just it flows so well uh we're we're um so anyway enough of that um the other thing is starting next week on saturday so i'm continuing wednesday nights with the free classes of learning to receive messages uh this coming wednesday we'll continue with a uh, card reading um and i'm going to teach you guys how to do a multi-deck spirit card reading um and then on saturday i'll continue with the harness your inner fire this week we're doing crown chakra Whoa. next week we're going to do pineal gland which is where the crown chakra and the third eye meet and all the magic that comes with all things pineal. Um, and then um, and then after that, we get to the really fun stuff of working with energy flow, working with the chakras outside of your body, working with the energy radiating out, learning how to direct and focus your energy, learning like how to release blocks without any emotional trauma. You know, it's, We'll start getting into all the really fun stuff. I can't wait. But um, Saturday, starting next week, not today, next week, every Saturday at 3 p.m., the Akashic Record librarians are going to channel through me. They have a lot to say. <laughs> and if you haven't seen me channel before, um, you can go on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link there um, in the comments after this so you can see them. You can go on my YouTube channel um, and my website and see me channeling. I'm what's called an open channel. Um, and by the way, those of you who are coming on Wednesdays and Saturdays, these classes, if you want to become a channel, these are the skills you need. So this is awesome. Like, keep on joining me. Uh, the librarians, like, my goal is to have as many of you as possible be as much like me or variations of me as, um, as fits with your desire and your life path. I want you to have the ability so that channeling not channeling receiving not receiving is by your decision your choice not because you want to but you can't uh, i want all of you to be empowered the librarians who as some of you know they basically raised me you know and i have been in constant communication with them like my entire life um they want everyone to know what's happening on our planet and um what will continue to happen on our planet what's not just now but what happened like the creation of earth to now and what is the point of earth they call it the earth project so it's not just like a planet happened and people happened there is just as each of us have a life path earth has a life path and they want as many people as possible to be in the full understanding so that um, we can together manifest the best possible future, the best outcome, uh, the best forward life for Earth and for us. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You guys are so wonderful. I really appreciate these comments. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the mothership has come to take me. <laughs> it's called the sun. <laughs> so, um, actually, I'm going to pull this a little bit. The sun's coming out now, and it's not only right in my eyes, but... There. That's... Whoa. <laughs> wow <laughs> i am definitely going to look like a strange alien today <laughs> that's okay <laughs> so anyway every saturday whoops almost dropped you every saturday at 3 p.m <laughs> i will be 
doing um, a live stream. It'll be on Zoom, channeling the librarians. And I'll put the registration for it. Uh, you have two options. You can buy a ticket, just one off for $20 to attend one of the channeled events. Um, or you can get a monthly membership where the librarians want to send short daily messages. Um, sometimes those will be channeled. Sometimes those will be just said to me, but those will be like every day everyone gets like a little, you know, five to 10 minute. Um, all right, hold on. This is okay, hold on guys. Okay, there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> we'll see how long we go with this. So anyway, for the monthly membership, every day you get a little um, message, and then you can attend all the once a week channeled sessions, and you'll have access to the whole catalog of the recordings of any previous messages, uh, previous sessions, like the whole daily stuff and the weekly stuff. Um, so they said, because, you know, it's going to be a lot of work, so I do need to charge for this, but they want anyone who wants to be able to access it. So for the time being, anyone who joins now for the rest of 2020, it will just be uh, $20 a month. So the monthly membership is the same cost as the one off ticket. Um, and that way, like if you try it once and you're like, oh, I just want to see what it is. I don't want to commit to anything. It's not that big a deal. And then if you're like, oh yeah, no, I really like this. I want the membership. I want to be able to access the previous videos and stuff. It's just $20 once a month. Um, and then the people who join now, at least for the next you know year or two, it'll just be twenty dollars a month. People who join starting twenty twenty one, it'll be like I don't know, like forty fifty forty dollars a month. So, but um, you won't get an increase in twenty twenty one. It will stay twenty dollars a month. Um, yes, thank you, thank you. I'm like. I'm so used to now doing the free live streams, the thought of charging for something overwhelms me. But I also know like this is so much work. It's so much work. Um, I can't do it without it being uh, some sort of reciprocation. Um, and, but the librarians have so much to say. They wanna teach everyone how time works. Um, and uh, they uh, want to teach everyone like, how earth was created why it was created they want to teach you about civilizations that lived on earth before us and um they want to teach you what happened to make the reptilians go bad um they want to teach us about like what's happening on earth now and how each of us can heal the planet completely um they want to teach us like what earth is supposed to be going to and why, like they have so much information. And um, yeah, like last Tuesday, I was talking with some, you know, friends, uh, 3D friends, like a, a group that I meet with uh, and we meditate together. Um, and they, some people were sharing information that was so opposite to everything I received. I like freaked out because I felt like the information they were sharing from uh, those that they listened to was promoting um, things that would be harmful for people I love, you know, like saying it's okay to go out in public and, you know, so like I, I was freaking out and a couple of things hit me. Um, oh, good, good, Debbie. I'm so glad. I look forward to sharing this with you. <laughs> um, so a couple of things hit me. One, what do I always say? Whenever 
I freak out over something, it lets me know that I have a karmic lesson within me that I may thought have, I've gotten on the other side of, but I'm still in it. So I need to go in and look at myself and say, why am I automatically reactive? Because I've got something in me to heal, to release, to acknowledge, you know. Also, um, why is it I feel my truth is the only valid truth? The, tr the messages I receive are the only valid ones. Um, you know, what is valid about these other messages and why is it that I'm resistant to them? Because again, if divine beings are channeling through someone and they're giving relevant messages, those are valid. If I'm not accepting them, then that's on me. I, <laughs> so I spent two days, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, instead of sleeping, I spent a lot of meditation. Thank God for my Vipassana practice so that I can like hold focus for that long. And um, I mean, I wasn't nonstop for two days, but I was a lot. And instead of sleeping, I was just up in the Akashic Library. So uh, for those of you who wonder how that is, when I come out of it, I am sick as a dog. I'm like nauseous. I have a migraine because I have yet to learn how to come back gracefully. I, my essence slams back in my body and I'm like so disoriented. It's like getting morning sickness for those of you who ever had babies. Like I feel like I have toxic shock syndrome and a migraine and food poisoning all at once. And that's how I wake up in the morning when I do this work. I have to then meditate and get myself realigned because there's no medication that helps with it, trust me. Um, so the librarians were like telling me how I, I see everything on the big picture because what I'm seeing is what's happening on planet Earth is like the platform for all the work that I'm here to help guide towards. My work is more about making sure we get to the future. So what happens in the here and now, I'm very, I'm not going to say I'm disattached because we're in the midst of, you know, a tragedy. But my energy is more connected to the future and going there. So when those who are channeling are talking about things for the here and now, I don't feel as connected to what they're saying because I'm not. But what they're saying is not so much for me. It's for other people who are connected to that. And so the librarians were showing me like the mosaic of everything happening in the here and now. And um, it really helped me like become re-emotionally balanced. So I mentioned this because as we're working with crown chakras, you will find that you're getting more and more information, but you don't necessarily understand the information you get. So be very, very aware that when you are reactive to anything, it's really important you stop and you let things get into place. And if they're not getting into place, understand, acknowledge what you're feeling, don't repress it. <laughs> You know, we're not like wasps at a cocktail party in Connecticut, right? Um, I'm sorry, that was so, I don't know what you call it, race, whatever is it is, that's terrible. But you get my meaning. We acknowledge, we accept, we love everything within us, including extreme responses. However, we don't need to do anything with them except get to know them and ask them what purpose they serve. Why are they here? What is it they need to evolve to their higher state of energy? Okay. Um, and we will be learning all of that in these classes and the librarians have a lot to say about that. So, um, <laughs> all right. enough preamble. I apologize. I just soaked up a half hour of your time. I didn't mean to. Um, excellent. Yes. If, understand, if you are here watching this video of mine or joining with any of these, whether it be mine or anyone else, and you feel in your heart what we're saying connects with you, then you are here to help heal the planet. And there is so many ways for us to heal the planet. 
one of which is flowing with clean energy. Um, and I know sometimes people get angry with me when they say, if I'm sitting alone in my home flowing with love, how is that helping the planet? It is because you're bringing divine love through you and out. You know, that's like, how does putting clean water in a polluted ocean help clean the ocean? It does. It all does. If you let yourself get depressed by what's going on, then go inside and heal what needs to be healed. You are here to flow with divine love. Um, it was, uh, what, like two and a half years ago, the first time Jesus came through me, when the librarians were saying, each and every one of us, if we had full faith, and I'm talking full faith, not, oh, I want to believe, or I believe it can be done, and I'd like to be full 100% faith that you could heal the planet with a single thought, then you would heal the planet with a single thought. And people were saying, that's not possible, that's not possible. Um, and the librarian said, okay, hold on a minute, we're going to get someone who can explain it better than we can. And so then they went, and like all people saw was me like, nah, 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 nah. and you know, we'll get someone who can do it, and you know, my eyes are shut, my head's down, I'm all slumped over. But what I saw was the librarians ran off to get someone, and then suddenly Jesus is standing right in front of me. He's got Mary Magdalene and Judas with him. Mother Mary, Father Joseph, Archangel Michael, and Metatron were off on the side watching like a soccer family, you know, very proud, just beaming with love and pride. And Jesus said to me, may I speak through you? Um, and I freaked out. Now, again, the whole time I'm like, all this stuff is happening. All people saw was the top of my head slumped over. And I was like, you're real? Like, I'm a Unitarian Jew. Like, I've never had any connection with Jesus in my life. And he's like, certainly I'm real. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. And then, you know, by the time he was done talking with everyone, like, when I came back out, I had tears, like my shirt was drenched with the tears. And um, Mary Magdalene had been standing behind me with her hands on my back, uh, on the back side of my heart chakra. So it was on my shoulder blades to like keep me grounded and give me extra energy to hold this very uh, extraordinary presence. And Judas, whom Jesus and Mary called Judas the pure and uh, Mary the bold, Mary the brave, um, he was right next to me, sort of creating sacred space for me. So I was in this like tunnel of Judas's love with Mary grounding me. And Jesus, who's very passionate, uh, as he was talking and he got like really passionate and he's crying from all his passion, Mary put her hands on my spine because she had to put more energy into grounding me. So when I came out, I wasn't the only one crying. Everyone was crying. And then um, when I got home, like my back was super itchy, like I had a rash or something. So I took off my shirt and looked in the mirror and I had third degree burns all the way down my spine. They were blistered. Um, and I was like, wow, okay, so I guess that was real. And then the next morning I woke and I'm like, dang, I forgot to photograph my spine. So I ran over the mirror with my little cell phone ready to photograph my spine and it was not only completely healed, the only abrasions were where I had scratched them. So scratch marks. I'm like, now who's going to believe me? Oh, well. <laughs> so this is where working with your crown chakra and having a strong crown chakra is so relevant. Because um, if you have like a flimsy crown chakra that's got holes in it, no structure, divine can come at you and they can flow a little through you, but it's like you got to see stuff is going out there. You, you can't quite grab it. Um, oh, thank you, Leah. Yes, Melena, we will heal the planet. Um, so if you have like a powerful crown chakra, 
And for the purposes of this work, your crown chakra and your root chakra are the same. Remember, I say, if you want to receive the goodies, your crown chakra, I mean, there are other techniques. So if you work with other techniques, that's fine. For this technique, your root chakra, the deeper and wider you can set it so that it is a powerful base of support, the higher, wider, stronger your crown chakra can be. Think of your crown chakra and your root chakra as one. Um, a friend of mine and I were talking yesterday, and she raised an interesting point, which is um, when you ground into earth, you are grounding to something that is not you. It is okay to have earth support you, just as um, if you have, uh, you know, any, if you have an hourglass and you want to put it on the ground, if you put it in the air, it's going to fall to the ground. So it's okay to have earth support you. Um, you can connect to earth. And there are plenty of times when we do that, but remember when you do that, you're connecting to an entity that is not you. So you are not earth. Now you can become one with earth. There's plenty of exercises where we do that. So when I say ground into earth, spreading your shock, root chakra deep and wide, giving it permission to flow deep and wide because it, you don't actually need to do anything. It will do it with your direction. Mother Mary comes and supports you but the chakra crown to root that is all you that is your energy everything else is supporting energy uh which is great we love support we love support um when your crown chakra goes up the better you are supported like all this energy grid we've been working on making yourself very solid structure the more you can raise your crown chakra and maintain your awareness. Like, you know, the, when you're on a guided meditation and they're taking you up higher and higher in frequency, and at a certain point you kind of space out, and then later as they're coming down in frequency, whether you're going up to the cosmos, other dimensions, a sacred mountain, whatever, as they're coming down in frequency, closer to 3D, you're like, oh, I must have dozed off for a moment. How long was I out for? And then when everyone's like doing their shares, oh, I loved it when you did this. I loved it when you did that. I'm like, when you said this, I was like, this is what I experienced. You're like, I missed all of that. Where was I? How long was I out? The You space out at the maximum level. You can hold your awareness. You can hold your awareness to however high your energetic structure can support. Okay? Um, you know, if you are uh, doing, making a coffee in one of those, like where you're pouring the hot water, the, what is it, the Italian style. So you have the filter on the top with the little paper filter with the coffee and you're pouring and the paper filter kind of folds in at a certain point because it doesn't have the structure to absorb the water and the direction of the water and stay upright. But then you go and you get like one of those great gold mesh filters with the plastic around your pore and it stays all the time. So our chakras are kind of like that. However much you build it, it can maintain and hold. For the crown chakra, one of the cool things about the crown chakra, and we're going to do this uh, in coming weeks, and we'll also do the same with the root chakra, is... It's not your top chakra. You have lots of chakras between you and your soul. And from your soul on up to God. Like you, every one of you, me, all of us, we have chakras that extend all the way to source because each of us was born from source. And we have chakras that extend all the way down to Gaia because each of us was created by Gaia. So, um, and the librarians will explain all of that <laughs> on our Saturdays. Um, or, and we'll talk about it some too. So the more, when you extend your crown and your root chakra, these are like the top and bottom chakra of your physical body. As you extend it up, you can very comfortably navigate 
the chakras between you and your soul. There's a thing called the Hara line, and that is the line of energy that connects you to your soul, and it flows down through the core of your being. You remember how often I say you are who you are from your core radiating outward. You are not all the things that happen out there that glob onto you, that claim this is who you are. Oh, you see my cat back there? Donovan, the albino Maine Coon cat. Uh, 23 pounds of albino fluff and teeth and claws. So, uh, thank you. Uh, Denise, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> and, and Isaac, uh, thank you. So, your soul sends energy down to you through your core. This energy flows through the center of your chakras. And then you're going out having life experience and that stuff that comes from outward inward. And then your energy is a combination of your soul going outward and life experiences coming inward. Also mixing with the persona that you created for yourself while you're traveling your life path or going off of it. So there's a lot going on here that helps us define who we are. But if you want to be like, true to who you are in all aspects I don't agree. tap into your very innermost core and talk to your soul who am I supposed to be am I supposed to be feeling ashamed about this embarrassed about that your soul will always steer you right it just takes a little while so all of this horror line that goes up and down if you build up your crown chakra and your root chakra, and they're going up and up and down and wide, you can travel all the chakras above you to your soul with great comfort. And the higher you get protected by your crown chakra, the more all of that energy becomes this energy inside you. So that you can really, it's just easier to become your ultimate self in everyday life crown chakra is so good here let me go <laughs> um, all right um if anyone has questions about what i'm saying please feel welcome to type them because i feel like this is like um what i'm saying it's not counter to anything you've ever heard but it may be like a little you know, um, mind blowing. Um, as you build up, like for those of you who would read the Bible or have read the Bible or are familiar with the Bible, um, you know, in, uh, the garden of Gethsemane, uh, Gethsemane, Gethsemane, um, uh, when it's the final night before the Romans come and take Jesus. And, uh, and you can ask Jesus, uh, that didn't quite go down the way the Bible says. Uh, he talks about in the book he channeled through me, how Jesus planned his life, um, which I'll put a link to that here also. It, it's a pretty good book, if I say so myself. <laughs> I'm working on my next book now, um, Are You Ascending to Master? And it's about all of this here and now and how so many of us are waking up. Um, so anyway, um, when Jesus is uh, saying, will no one stay awake with me because uh, he wants everyone to stay awake with him on his final night, but they all fall asleep, it didn't happen quite like that. They were all sitting and meditating together, trying to hold sacred space for all of them. But Jesus took everyone's frequency up higher and higher and higher until they spaced out. And he was the only one with awareness. So this is why, like, the more you build your crown chakra, as must be supported by a powerful root chakra, the more you can start connecting directly with all these, like, awesome souls that I connect with. Like, how cool will it be one day when we join here on a Saturday and we get settled and we open up and Ascended Masters are coming and talking to all of us? Because that is 
totally a realistic goal for us in, I don't know, probably a month or two. Um, I have a few special guest presenters who are also going to come and join me on uh, coming Saturdays and Wednesdays. So uh, they'll be able to share information with you that I utilize only better than I can. Okay, um, well, it looks like no questions. So let's do an exercise to build up our crown chakra. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna spend much time on the chakras inside the body because we're really working on the structure of energy going down deep, deep and wide, and the crown going up, up and high. Um, some of you may find as we're doing work that you get a little vertigo or a little queasy. If that happens, invite the energy to uh, flow a little less fiercely or invite your hourglass to expand a little more. So you may find rather than being in an hourglass, it's more like you're floating, free floating in the middle of a tube. Um, that's where we're hoping to get to anyway, that's in our future. So if you feel the need to just expand the hourglass and let the energy flow through you and around you, that's perfect, that's perfect. Um, if you feel any pressure or pain especially in your head when the energy is coming in uh, or behind your eyeballs or inside your head. That's just your body's um, automatic, instinctive, like blocking something foreign, invading. Um, just like when someone comes up behind you and taps you on the shoulder, you kind of jump, spin around like, oh, you startled me. Um, so that's just your body's automatic way of protecting you if you're feeling any pain discomfort pressure anything unpleasant acknowledge it give it permission to resolve itself thank it for being so protective and loving and caring of you and give it permission to relax let it know this is safe this is all good um, if you feel any queasy or vertigo or anything like that, again, invite the energy to flow more out of you. Invite your root chakra to spread out wider. Invite the middle of your hourglass to spread wide. Anything that you feel uncomfortable, acknowledge it, thank it, and work with it to adjust. If you're not sure what to do, then ask it, what do you need? What do you need? I give you full permission to resolve yourself so that the energy can flow. You may find a little bit of blocked energy, like a little block will come and talk to you and say, hey, you know, I've been stuck in you ever since you were nine years old and you were, you know, at a birthday party and um, everyone wanted to play a game you'd never played before and they teased you. I've been in you ever since then. And I would really, really, do not want to be here. I'm a trauma that's like, like sometimes these traumas that are stuck in us, whenever they rise up, we are like, no, 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 and we cram them down. These traumas are rising up to come to your awareness so that you can release them. They think of you as a jail and you're the jailer and they're stuck in here, they're imprisoned in you. But guess what, when you die, they're all gonna be, go out anyway. So you may as well let them out now. You don't need them stuck in your body, blocking and traumatizing and distressing. If anything rises up that is in any way below the frequency of the flow of love, acknowledge it and give it permission to relax, release, disperse, give it love and gratitude and let it flow, let it go, whatever. Um, okay, so I think because I was direct to say all of that so severely, uh, 
I think that there's going to be a lot of releasing out there. If you find yourself releasing, that's good. Crown chakra work does that. And um, if you find yourself crying or anything, acknowledge it, let it go. Um, some of you all joined me uh, Thursday night when the amazing featherway shaman, Garrett Duncan, was doing a Zoom uh, learning to speak light language, star language class. And um, a number of students, even during the class, were having physical responses to connecting with their original, like, soul family, their cosmic family. Um, I know several people who had to take a break from the class to go and, like, even, like, throw up or things like that. And the next day, a lot of people had, like, gastrointestinal distresses, you know, diarrhea, headaches, flu-like symptoms. This is your body detoxing things out so that all the yummy good stuff can flow in. And it's about the frequencies coming together. Like when you get seasick, when you go on a ship while you're getting your sea legs going. So um, if anything like that happens, <coughs> the more you flow with love, the easier and better it can happen. Um, Okay, as we are settling into our energy and relaxing so deeply, is it normal for our breathing to be so shallow and extended? It is comfortable, but I feel as though I'm barely breathing. Is this a normal part of relaxing in these exercises? It can be. It can be. Uh, just like when you're sleeping at night, you might breathe very shallowly. Um, work with your, like, breath work is a whole thing on its own. Um, like uh, when I do uh, Hindu exercises, like uh, sometimes we're breathing in one nostril, out the other, right? When I do shamanic work, we will breathe in through the nose all the way down to the belly. And then you breathe out two thirds of the breath, three quarters of the breath. You leave the rest in your belly and then you breathe back out the nose. And then you breathe back in the nose all the way. You breathe out like two thirds of the breath. And then you breathe back in. This is like, and we'll do that sometimes for an hour before we start the ceremony. And um, it took me a long time to be able to do that without panicking that I'm suffocating myself. Um, so there's so much with breath work. That's like an extraordinary tool on its own. But in this exercise, your body knows how to breathe. It knows what it wants and needs. If you are lying here with your nose and your mouth open, you are open and freely doing whatever you want. Your body will not let you suffocate. Your body will not um, let you be harmed. So it could be you're just breathing very lightly and then suddenly you take in a deep breath or it could be you know just be one with whatever your body is doing for you hi uma hey guys this is uma joined us she's one of the people for the event tomorrow that i mentioned uma of uh lotus love and light and i and rob pritchard and carlos the medium so everyone show a little love for uma let me see my little I'm the worst at hearts, okay? <laughs> I am terrible at hearts. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I'm dyslexic or what. <laughs> but um, she's the one who got all of us together to for the presentation. Like, she's the one who did all the organization and the inspiration that all of us joined in on. Um, George's aloe water is a great rehydrate and helps with detoxing to settle the stomach and flush the acid out. That is awesome to know, and I am all in on that. <laughs> okay, you see all those hearts, Uma? They're for you, darling, along with mine. Okay, so um, Uma, you joined just at the right time, and Diane and Don, you guys joined at the perfect time because we are about to start our crown chakra meditation. Um, so everyone relax however you want to relax. Um, and 
um, your eyes can be closed or open. If they're open, invite them to be spaced out. Uh, some people find for this kind of exercise, um, if they relax, like lying or sitting, they kind of fall asleep. So some people find it better to be um, doing some sort of manual task like dishwashing, folding laundry, taking a walk uh, to help maintain your, um, your uh, ability to stay awake and aware. Oh, thank you. Uma put a link to the Raising Your Vibration tomorrow. Okay, so now no more interruptions, just the... Uh, uh, they're, uh, they're kind of a heart. It looks more like an apple. Uh, but I love apples, so that works. Okay, so um, invite your body just to relax however it wishes to be. Eyes open and unfocused or closed. If your eyes are closed and halfway through you space out, so you want to open them, invite them just be unfocused. If you find your consciousness moving off to uh, your shopping list, invite it to come on back. Sometimes meditating is like herding bunny rabbits. You're just constantly pulling them back in. If you find your awareness is drifting away from my words because a divine being or your guardian angel or your soul or someone is calling to give you a message or to spend time with you, go with that, always. Shopping list daily tasks, no. Divine interruptions, always. Sometimes they're waiting for your awareness to get to a certain frequency so they can talk with you. And today we may be opening that door. So that is perfect. Invite all your organs and the energy in your body to relax and flow on its own. If you have any issues, you know, acknowledge it and invite it to resolve itself. Give your feet permission to relax. Give your feet permission to let all the energy that's in them flow out through the bottom of your feet, deep into earth, where Mother Earth is there, beloved Gaia, Pacamama, ready to absorb all your energy, transform it into the highest frequency of love, and then send it out deep into earth. And invite all the energy in your body to flow down through your legs, down through your feet, deep into earth. You'll notice the top of your head naturally and instinctively wants to relax. It may already feel light and airy and tingly. It may already feel very open, like a, a top of the hourglass is opening up above you. And all of the beautiful, divine, cosmic love, angelic love, source love, universal, multidimensional love, comes flowing in through your light and airy top of your head, down, swirling around inside your head, flowing down your neck, shoulders, down through your arms, down your body, your legs, deep into earth. As the energy is flowing through your body, if you find any blocks or disruptions, acknowledge them, give them permission to resolve themselves, give them permission to be carried away through this flow of love. Just as a river flowing down a mountain, when it comes to any boulders or fallen trees, it will flow over it, around it, might pick it up and carry it down to the ocean. It might dissolve it, break it up into pieces and send it out. When the energy flows, 
it flows completely. Invite your root chakra to spread out deep and wide. To give you a beautiful structure of support. You'll notice as your root chakra spreads out deep and wide, your crown chakra feels activated immediately, instinctively, and is very comfortable expanding or thickening or spreading out, growing taller. All the chakras in your body between there feel lit up with all of this beautiful energy flowing, like a chain of lights. One end lights up, it lights up everything between as the energy flows. If you feel any discomfort or blocks, acknowledge it, give it permission to resolve itself. And invite your crown chakra and your root chakra to automatically, instinctively work in perfect harmony. Remind them that they are actually two sides of the same chakra. They are two sides of the energy flow. Energy is flowing in from the divine cosmic source, interdimensional universal love and light filling your being flowing through into earth where your openness is helping to heal our planet invite your crown chakra spread up Feel how is it more comfortable? Is it more comfortable going up high, more comfortable going wide? Or does it hit an area of comfort that's perfect for it and it just wants to relax there? Play with your crown chakra. If you want, you can also play with your root chakra. See how adjusting one affects the other. They will automatically communicate and coordinate with each other. As your crown and your root are so flowing, you can even look at the structure of this hourglass or tubular chakra. What does it look like to you? Does it look like just flowing energy without edge, swirling? Or does it look like you actually have a form that everything is flowing inside? If so, does it have a color? Does it have a thickness, a texture? Give yourself a moment to explore the actual exterior and edge of your chakras and their flow. How does it make you feel when you connect with the edge of this flow? You can touch it with your hands. How does it make your hands feel? How do your hands impact your chakra flow? 
Are you sending loving energy back and forth and circulating it around? Is there any tangible feeling to this? Any emotions that awaken? Bring your awareness to the top of your crown chakra. How wide or high is it right now? What sort of energy is coalescing there at the top of it? At this point, I want you to open your heart and invite all the love in your heart to shoot up, 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 up your crown chakra, up, and call out to your soul to come and connect with you. Let your heart expand open as big and wide as it can and shoot that energy up like a rocket ship on up all the way to your soul and call your soul to come down and nestle in the top of your crown chakra. When you are connected with your soul, Only, only energy of the frequency of your highest eternal state of being on up is able to come down and connect with you. There is no one who knows your needs and knows how to care for your best well-being than you in your purest eternal form. The energy of pure love. Invite your soul to filter down, nestling in the top of your beautiful receptive crown chakra. Invite your heart-to-heart -heart connection, your soul's heart to your heart. Invite your heart-to-heart -heart connection. You in physical, you in eternal. Flowing through your crown chakra. As though you are in a family reunion with your older sibling, your favorite older sibling who loves you more than anything. The two of you are together, your soul and you. Invite that energy. Invite your soul to flow this love down your crown chakra into you, into your physical body. And invite your physical body to be receptive to this beautiful, comfortable, natural, but powerful energy flowing in. You may need to do a little adjustment and acknowledging because you, my friend, are potent. Your pure eternal form is powerful and filled with the highest frequency 
of love, friendship, kindness, wisdom, invite your soul to flow this energy into you. You will feel it flows into the core of your being. Indeed, this energy is always flowing in the core of your being. Your soul is always connected with you and always flowing through you. Remember, you are who you are from your core radiating outward. At this moment, though, we are inviting more of our eternal state to flow into our physical state. We're inviting a little more of the energy of you may feel like there's a lot happening in your core. There is. It may feel a little intense. It may feel like a lot of energy flowing in a tight space. Invite the space to relax. Just as the river flows downward, steam rising up off the water in a beautiful morning sunrise time emanates outward as your soul's energy flows in through your crown chakra into the light and airy top of your head and flows in through your mind through your body invite it to flow invite everything to relax and absorb it and let it emanate outward all around you If you'd like, you can even acknowledge how beautiful, how powerful, how eternal and filled with love you are. You can feel the dichotomy is appropriate that you are an eternal being of love and you are a regular person having a 3D experience bumbling through life. These two essences are completely compatible and they love each other completely. If your root chakra needs a little adjustment, if energy flow needs a little tweaking, if anything in you needs extra absorbing, give it permission. Filling, flowing with your eternal state of being. The purity of the divine love that is with you always. Infiltrating emanating especially any parts of you that you are ashamed of or embarrassed of or you feel are unworthy of love invite the love to flow there even more so because you are completely perfect as you are and every inch of you every cell of you is worthy of receiving love especially this beautiful divine love that is from you that is of you that is for you invite your soul to come even closer through your crown chakra down 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 to even come and be with you, maybe talk with you or heal you or share a moment with you. Spend a moment with your soul and give your soul permission to tell you something nice, to share something with you. Ask your soul, what gift 
do you have for me? Because your entire life is a gift for your soul. So what does your soul have for you? Wonderful. Now, hug your soul, invite your soul to wrap around you and give you a hug. And then invite your energy to flow back down into you as your soul's energy rises back up. But you can feel this horror line, this connection that has always been there and will always be here the entire time you are in life, when you are in next life and next life, every life. When you are done with this life, it is what you rise up to, to return to your soul. And to be with all of your past lives and the energy waiting to be your future lives and your soul energy. For indeed, you are not just the you of this life. You are the you of all your lives. And you are all the family of you. So invite your soul to return, invite your crown and root chakra and all your energy to just comfortably go to a shape and flow that makes you feel good at the moment. If you need any little adjusting, a little like vertigo realignment, energy, cooling, calming. Return to yourself. It's okay if you feel a little spacey. It's okay if you feel a little more expanded than you were, you know, an hour ago. I mean, it's all good. But return to yourself. And if you want, throughout this day, you can sort of play with your energy centers, play with your crown and roots a little bit. You can reach out. Check on your soul here and there throughout the day or tap into Gaia or open up and flow with love and send it to her. You know, I invite you to spend today playing with your crown and your root chakra and seeing like what fun you can have. Remembering this is kind of a heady experience. So give yourself breaks or... You know, be kind and gentle. If you find yourself getting spacey, you might want to ground a little bit. If you find yourself uh, having any, like, vertigo or anything, then sort of stop what you're doing and relax and let everything flow. Um, it is heavy. If you're finding any weight, invite it to flow through. Just invite it to flow through. You know, invite your root chakra to expand a little bit so everything can just keep flowing. Um, and, you know, if any of it wants to emanate outward or shoot back upward, if anything feels heavy, if it's getting stuck in you, talk with it and say, uh, what's with this? What do you need? And um, you may have something in you that wants to talk with you before it releases. Um, so explore it. That can all be really unique. Uh, sometimes like crying is good. That's a beautiful release. I always say when I'm crying, then I know I'm having the real experience, you know, because we all have that, uh, did I make this up? You know, is, it, is, is this all in my imagination? When I'm crying, then I know it's real because making things up will not make me cry. 
Um, and also it's just a beautiful release. It's energy coming out. It's so beautiful. You can't contain it all. I love, I love it. Um, in fact, after a meditation, if I'm crying, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing all kinds of songs that make me happy. Just letting everything outward. Um, maybe dance a little bit. So, um, yeah, crying is good. Crying is good. If any of you have any, like, uh, physical issues, like headaches or gastrointestinal or anything, it could be your body is detoxing. So just, like, get into alignment, love yourself, release. And, you know, like I said, all of us were in Garrett's class the other night. A lot of us were on the phone with each other the next day going, were you throwing up? Did you have diarrhea? Did you have, you know, like we were all having very, because we were releasing so much because all this pure energy comes in and it's a frequency. And what do frequencies do? They vibrate, right? So all of the, everything of a lower frequency was released from our bodies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, feel welcome to contact me if you have um, any concerns because we're like doing some, powerful work now um and um yeah yeah that's it um thank you guys for spending this time with me uh if anyone else has any questions or comments or shares uh, you're welcome and um, i hope to see you all tomorrow at our raising our vibration raising our frequency like as you can imagine with this work we're doing I really suggest, especially if you like are having any issues, join us tomorrow because that is all about learning how to manage all of this. You know, it's it's powerful, powerful stuff we're dealing with, and the more tools you have on how to deal with in a way that is joyous and healthy, and like keeps you on the track that feels good for you. You know, that's important. Let's see. Um, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you feel good and. You know, your soul is always here for you. Your soul is always here for you. If anyone else came through for you, like a guardian angel or a collective or whomever, um, you know, go for it. So I'm going to tell you, before we get off, a quick anecdote. So any of you who are bored of my anecdotes, feel welcome to jump off because there's no lesson after the anecdote. Um, so uh, a few years ago, I guess four years ago, maybe five, four years ago, uh, I was in a group meditation. And um, is PayPal the only way for tomorrow? Um, uh, message Uma, Uma who's here, and she can, uh, she's in charge of the payment. Like, thank you, Uma. She's managing everything she's such a goddess um, message uma in a facebook message on how to pay if paypal isn't your thing um well leah i'm so glad you wanted to stay connected and you can go back and watch the meditation part of this again and reconnect if you want um you guys, I am in the process of loading all of these series into my website so that you can go back and again, editing into chunks so you don't have to watch the whole class to get to the meditation. And it will be the whole series, like every week's worth, both Saturday and Wednesday. So as soon as I have that up, I'll let you know so you can, because they're going to be free on my uh, website. Um, what a great experience. You saw an angel. Oh, and you vibrated. You Oh my God, that is so beautiful. I love that. I love that, Margie. That's great. <laughs> oh, Crystal. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we were all. I mean, um, I hope now anyone who's here now who was there Thursday who didn't purge, like, don't feel bad. Good for you. That meant that you didn't have like all the toxins the rest of us had to get rid of. Um, Kitty, uh, they're here on my, the past chakra ones are here on my Facebook page. So if you go to my page and then go to my videos, you can find them or my previous events. 
but I am loading them into my website in a more edited fashion. And um, I kind of thought this quarantine time I'd have more time on my hands to do all the things that I wanted to do. But honestly, it feels like I'm up at 6 in the morning, and the next thing I know, it's 11 at night. And I'm like, damn, I only did a portion of my list every day. So, um, and... You're welcome, Debbie. I love you. And hey, Debbie, join us this Tuesday night, okay? Uh, and message me to send you the link because uh, I want you there for the Tuesday group. Um, but I meant to send the link, and then I always forget it's when I'm near my computer. So Margie, you experience a lot of pressure in your third eye. Yes. So Margie, the pressure in your third eye is something I want you to explore in meditation because you don't Here's the thing. I have people tell me all the time, I can always tell when I'm opening up because I feel so much pressure in my third eye. The pressure is your natural resistance to opening. This is really, really common with empaths and telepaths and people that when we were little and we'd open up and we're like, oh, the angels are this and that, and like next thing you know, we're in trouble. So we learn to shut it down. Uh, if you want to be safe, you shut it down. So now we're opening it, and the third eye is like, no, 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 it's not safe. It's not safe. So it's fighting you on it. So work with your third eye. Uh, what I suggest is talk with your third eye. Have a conversation with your third eye. And so your third eye is a friend who's a little bit scared of trying something that they tried before and didn't work out so well for them. Okay. And you saw vertical rope from your crown to your root. That is awesome. Yes. Um, thank you, Liz. Thank you. I'm so glad this was beautiful for you. And excellent, excellent. Um, can you be added to the group call? Um, you were great. Um, well, Crystal, there isn't any group call. Um, it's just, um, I'm in a group that we meditate together every Tuesday, and we've been doing it for like years, and Debbie's a member of the group, and she kind of is busy with other things, and I'm like, you gotta come back, I need you. Um, I'm, excellent, excellent, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you, um, Crystal, that you are purging. That is so good. Um, okay, so the quick anecdote, then I'm going to jump off. Um, as I said before, it's natural for our um, awareness to get distracted, to get a little ADD. So you're like, I am one with everything. I'm one with everything. Did I take out the trash? Okay. Whenever that happens, you bring it back. Okay, you know what? Trash can wait. I'm one with everything. I'm one with everything. Ooh. I need to make sure that I blankety blank or nope, I'm one with everything. Like when that happens, you bring it back because that's how you build the structure. That's how you build the habit of being focused by letting the distractions, like don't judge yourself. Don't be like, oh, darn it. For the last two minutes, I was like spacing out and thinking about something else. That's okay. Just bring it back lovingly, kindly bring it back because you are building the energy structure. If you do that, I promise the day will come when one of two things or both will happen. One, you stop spacing out because you've learned to build the energy structure, the habit of focus. Or two, spacing out and coming back is very comfortable and you can always come back to where you were and keep going. Some people need the little mental breaks and then they come back. Um, a crystal curved in your third eye. That's, yeah, yeah, that I believe, Margie. With your energy, with your, what, what I see when you radiate, I believe that. Um, yeah, so, you know, don't worry, like, don't judge yourself. If you lose focus, bring it back. And you'll find over time, either you're very comfortable with losing focus and bringing it back, and then working up, or you lose less focus and you bring it back quicker with greater ease, or you just stop losing focus. So don't worry about it, just bring it back. But again, 
our guides are always trying to get messages to us and we're all like blocking them because we don't know they're talking to us. They're like, we're giving you all these signs. And you're like, I don't see any signs. They're like, this sign, that sign. You're like, oh, was that for me? Oh, I didn't notice it. Oh, I thought that was just normal. So when you're in a meditation and you are like flowing and open and your frequency gets to a certain point, your guides will be like, finally, we can give the person this message. And they jump in and they grab you. They take you from the meditation. Always go with that always so that's where i get my best stuff they're like finally finally um yeah and you know we all lose focus i can't even give you one anecdote without losing focus 20 times right so i'm sitting with a group and we're meditating it's a guided meditation and um somewhere in there my guardian angel and a bunch of other angels and my guides and my soul like a whole crowd of them grabbed me and they literally like and so it seemed to me like there i am woo, and while my body was still there unmoving it felt like they grabbed me and yanked me to somewhere else to talk with me and they were saying uh they were like a little upset with me they're like you are forgetting who you are you're forgetting yourself. You're so busy being one of the gang, one of the group, hanging out with your friends, that you are forgetting who you are and why you're here. You don't even remember who you are. I was like, I know who I am. I'm Benita, and I love meditating. I love this and that. And they're like, no. And they told me my soul's name. And I was like, uh, no, they said, what's your soul's name? And I told them, they said, you got it wrong. You don't even remember your soul's name. You're saying the wrong name. I was like, no, 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 that's my soul's name. And they went, no, it's not. Look in your cell phone because you have typed in there your soul's name. Um, you know, I have it as a picture to remind me. So I'm like, oh. So I looked in and there was a picture I have with my soul's name. And I'm like, oh, what do you know? I've been saying it wrong. Wow. Well, it's a good thing I saved this in my phone. Because, um, you know, what I was saying has a whole different frequency to this. And, um, okay. So they said, until you learn to pronounce your soul's name properly, you don't know who you are. And I said, why aren't I saying it right? And they said, because you forgot who you are. And this is a frequency. You're out of frequency. They were like, you know, energetically whooping me upside the head, shaking me. They, it, but lovingly, lovingly and with humor. But when we were coming back from the meditation, everyone else was off on whatever guided journey they had. This was my experience. And I came out of it and I was like, whew, it's a good thing I have that image of my soul's name as a JPEG in my phone because I really have forgotten who I am. I really have let myself get distracted by everyone else's needs and what everyone else wants and what you know, fun adventures, and I've, I'm just like drifting around having, I mean, not in 3D life, but in spiritual, energetic meditation life. I was just kind of having fun, and I was off my path. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And I pulled out my phone, and I looked in the pictures. I did not have a picture of my soul's name in there. And um, it's like, that's weird that I saw this image so strongly so when i got home i googled my soul's name and up came a picture that was the exact picture i had seen in my vision that had my soul's name written in it with this beautiful image and um and i was like well i better save this into my phone because i know i'm going to forget my soul's name and it was so funny because it was not an image I'd seen before ever in life until my guides showed it to me. And then because they showed it to me, I was like, huh, it never occurred to me that there might be an image out there with my name in it. And then when I did the search, there it was the exact thing. So I put in my phone, um, which it had not been in there before. So that's my little anecdote about why when you're open and you get to a certain frequency, sometimes they grab you and they take you somewhere to like give you really, really important messages or to connect or to like heal you or share something.
so um so when you're on a guided meditation if you step out of it because you're like 3d stuff then gently build your uh energetic structure to stay in it if you step out of it because you space out because they went beyond what you can manage then you know this is an area for you to also build structure and work your you know your structural integrity but if you step out of it because your guides and it doesn't have to be your you know it can be any one of the non-physical an animal spirit guide gaia a collective whomever uh your soul any past lives whomever someone you love who passed if they need to like connect with you or they want to or it's just like going to be something beautiful or relevant then you can stay there it's awesome and get the most always ask them what do you have to tell me what do you have to give me what is it you need from me like ask them these questions because they won't always volunteer and if they're just like they're staring at you you may start spacing out and pulling away from them so go ahead and keep saying why am i here and then open and receive whatever they offer do you have anything to give me you might get a physical gift you might get like an energy wash who knows um what do you need from me they might say to you we need you to really work on your throat chakra because we need you to start speaking in a way that's harmonious with the frequency we want to put out you never know what they're going to want from you um so ask them questions and then receive in whatever they give you. It may be an emotional download, it may be visual, it may be auditory, it may be like coding, it may be colors, feathers, a vision of some other place who knows what or where. And the more your root and your crown are powerful, the more you'll be able to connect and receive like well i saw feathers i have no idea what that means but over time you start going oh now i know what it means so that's my little anecdote and let's see um oh trinette i'm so glad i'm so glad that um that's great and <laughs> Um, and let's see uh correct if i'm wrong in what is the difference between when praying we equals we ask when we meditate we are connecting dots when we manifest we are attracting or creating or making it happen please elaborate the difference you know this is brilliant because it's all about frequencies um so when you're praying and you're asking what you're doing is um from my perspective at this moment when i'm praying i may be praying to someone specific or wide open and i'm asking for like a recalibration within me or some help or some guidance or so, so i am asking for help um or I'm praying to let those, whoever I'm praying to know that I value them, I appreciate them, I thank them. So there's a reciprocation there. For meditation, there's so many kinds of meditation. Like Taoist meditation, you empty and you become one with everything. So good. Vipassana meditation where you basically you allow your focus to be only on one thing without words a uh, typical vipassana meditation you focus on one body part for an entire day without any words so if i'm focusing on my right hand all day i don't think at all i'm right hand my right hand I just am completely aware of my right hand as we are an entity together for a whole day. I don't recommend practicing Vipassana without the training. Uh, and I'm not one to train people. I'm not, you know, like if that kind of thing interests you, it's very powerful. Uh, when we're allowed to be around people again, go to a two week or a 10 day Vipassana silent meditation retreat to get started 
Um, I try to do one or two a year because it's so powerful. Um, there's meditating on a guided meditation. There's meditating on working your energetic structure. Like there's so many techniques for meditation, chanting meditation, but it's all about connecting with frequencies, right? And, um, and it may be the frequency of you to the frequency of your guides or the frequency of you to your energy grid. So that's where I see the difference between praying and meditating, but really it's a fine line. Because really if I'm praying to say Archangel Michael, I'm connecting my frequency to him. So praying and meditating can kind of become the same thing. Manifesting, um, that is a technique in which you know what you want. You look at what you have, and then you find a way of getting what you want to be what you have is what you want. And um, that is an actual technique. It's a process. It's a meditative process, but you also have to put action to it as well. Um, White Buffalo Woman, one of my favorite quotes because I love her so much, when your prayers and your actions are in alignment, the path is easy. So there are ways of manifesting. There's manifesting where you uh, redefine reality at the moment just by energetically changing your perception of reality. Uh, that takes practice to be able to do. Um, but it's a powerful technique. We're, and the practice to get there is amazing. Or you can say, this is where I'm at. This is where I want. This is what I want. I release everything within me that is not compatible with this. And then I go forward to this as I'm drawing this to here until here and here are one and the same. Um, so, oh, hi, Mariam. So um, manifesting law of attraction, uh, redefining reality. Uh, there's, there are different techniques for that also, and they're all awesome to learn. Uh, they're all very healing and love-inducing, so I totally recommend. Um, the more you learn techniques for manifestation, the better you know what technique works for what situation and what kind of technique works great for you. I know someone, whenever he needs money, he just manifests it. He doesn't work. If he needs 10, like, he'll say, oh, I want $10,000. And I've seen him do this, where he'll go into a meditation and he will be one with the reality that an additional $10,000 appears in his checking account. This money doesn't come from anywhere. He's not taking from anyone. He does this great technique where he visualizes himself going to the ATM and depositing $10,000 cash into the ATM. So um, then when he comes out of the meditation and we went on the computer while he was meditating, $10,000 was actually deposited into his checking account. And I was saying like, who do you take it from? And he said, no one. I said, but it's stealing. I went, no, it's just a matter of flipping numbers in a, a computer doesn't come from anyone it doesn't you know it, it just I just gave myself some more money because money only create exists because we created it the moment we stop believing in money it stops existing I'm like oh okay but that doesn't really work for me because the hard as I try I do not actually believe 100% that the money will be there uh, I'm a little too emotional, but what I do when I manifest is whatever amount of money I need, I put it to my guides, like, and it took a while to get this. It took, you know, like a year or two to really get it going. And within that day, that much work will come to me or I'll suddenly get a rebate or like, for me, the money does come from somewhere because I don't in my core believe I can make money from nothing. And so that's also a fun exercise for me to work on. Why don't I believe I can do this? I see people doing it. I believe it can happen. So why is it that I don't have full faith in myself? I figure, you know, 
by the time I can do that, maybe I can also fully believe I can heal the planet. And there we go. Who knows? But it's fun exercise. Many ways of manifesting. Um, hi, Kim. Hi, Mariam. Uh, Margie, you did. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, the Vipassana retreat with Noble Silence is like, amazing and what i also love is you don't have to do any work like people do all the cooking and cleaning for you you don't have to talk with anyone you don't have to be there for you're just like totally in self and the more you 100 percent just throw yourself into the experience the more amazing it is um yes cleansing okay um Quantum jumping. I love that. I love that. I actually um, am not familiar with that term, Mariam, so I'm going to look that up. I recommend we all do because Mariam has shared something cool with us that we can play with. All right, you guys, so I've definitely run late today. I want to thank you guys so much. Okay, I'm going to try that heart thing again. Uh, like this? Like this? I, I'm, no, the heart is coming out. I love you guys. I love you and um, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, Cynthia Larson. See, and I don't even know her. There's so much I don't know. I love it when, you know, people I love, like Mar. And by the way, you guys, if you want some good meditation, I'm going to give a Mariam, who's here. Uh, she has a business called The Core Shift. She does the most wonderful inspirational messages. Check out the Core Shift on YouTube. Mariam, could you put a link to the Core Shift YouTube channel um, or whatever, your website, whatever social media you have? Mariam is an amazing artist. She does paintings of your soul. And they are like, oh my God, amazing. She's also like a life coach. And she's like one of the most angelically guided people I know. So uh shout out for my dear friend mariam who um i've studied with her and i will continue studying with her for the rest of my life and hopefully my next life too okay thank you guys thank you um if anyone's looking for me i'll be in my greenhouse all day have a wonderful 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 day